Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Today's lecture is the language of cinema. As you might be aware of that uh, like any other work, for example, like any other text uh, or literature, cinema too has its language, a distinct language, a distinct grammar and idiom of its own. Now, some of the basic foundations of this language are shots and uh, we will also be talking about uh, something called mise en scene. Um, you know that uh, when I was discussing key concepts with you, I have already discussed the concept of mise en scene and what constitutes mise en scene. And so, uh, at some point, you have been introduced to the idea of mise en scene. We will be talking at length about it also today, and that also makes up for the distinct language of cinema. We will be also talking about, I have already told you, shots, then lights camera positions, angles, etcetera. Okay, so, this is something that is uh, uh, more related to the technical aspect of cinema and uh, to begin with, I just want to show you a very short film, a very short feature, um, which will give you a good entry point into the world of the language of cinema. So, uh, this is uh, this particular uh, link. I am giving to you and it is called um, rather uh, uh, this is uh, good to understand the concepts of camera angles and shots. So, please make a note of this particular link and then come back. So, welcome back. I hope you have watched the uh, link and uh, um, benefited from the explanation given there. So, uh, we will be talking about cinematic images and shots now. So, cinematic images as you know, these are uh, image codes. They are best understood as the rules which govern the construction of the moving image and how that image communicates. For example, uh, we have uh, the concepts of reverse angle shot in the construction of a conversation between two people. Uh, very often you must have noticed that in conventional uh, kind of shot taking, uh, when two people talk to each other, you see the face of uh, the first person and the back of the head of the second one and vice versa. So, here uh, I would like to draw your attention to an excellently composed shot and reverse shot uh, scene, which is taken from one of my all time favorite films. Heat directed by Michael Mann and it is called the restaurant scene and here is the link. Please watch it and come back. Welcome back. I hope uh, you enjoyed the scene and I hope you have also noticed that how the two legendary actors Al Pacino and Robert De Niro were captured by camera in uh, an excellently composed shot and reverse shot frame. Now, the elements of signification of cine, uh, cinematic language are divided into the technical and symbolic, where the technical includes camera angles, camera movement, lighting, editing, sound, music, framing, etcetera. We here we are talking about the language of cinema. Please pay attention to this. While talking about camera shots, we have to understand that shots are the building blocks of a cinematic image. Just the way words build uh, a literary text, similarly shots build cinematic image. Now, the close up is a shot of an actor's body part, for example, face, hand, foot, eyes. It can also be a shot of an object, for example, a gun, a cigar. Uh, in many western you must have seen gun is an important part. Watch for example, uh, Sergio Leone's films and the way he captures 
uh, guns and uh, body parts in extreme close-ups. For example, in um, the good, the bad, the ugly, look at the way he uh, sort of you know um, positions the camera and focus and give a, gives us uh, an extreme close-up shot of uh, people's or the actors' hands, especially their guns. All right. In Once Upon a Time in the West, for example, you have uh, the scenes where there are extreme close-up shots of people's guns, uh, shoes as well as their hats. Again, in his uh, another great film, Once Upon a Time in America, you have the extreme close-up shots of uh, the protagonist's faces as well as their eyes. Okay. So, um, directors use close-up shots as well as extreme close-up shots in order to highlight emotions and drama. Objects are also used in order to uh, create a kind of tension in the film. For example, in, uh, uh, in Prakash Mehra's Zanjeer starring Amitabh Bachchan, uh, you have a close-up shot, an extreme close-up shot of a chain on somebody's wrist, a hand holding a gun and the child who is uh, hiding be, uh, inside a wardrobe, he watches that uh, mm, the hand, the gun and uh, mm, this chain hanging from the, uh, the, ki the killer's, the assassin's wrist. So, those are extremely uh, important sequences or shots. They signify the significance of that image, emphasize it and uh, uh, lead us into the narrative. At this point, I would like you to watch the opening shot of Taxi Driver. Here is the link. Please watch it and notice how extreme close-up shots are utilized. Welcome back. I hope you have uh, enjoyed the scene. In Taxi Driver, this is a, a 1970s movie directed by Martin Scorsese starring Robert De Niro and you find extreme close-up shots of Robert De Niro who plays a character called Travis Bickle here. And what is the significance of the extreme close-up shots of his eyes? Uh, we understand something is going on uh, in, uh, in the mind of the protagonist. So, the, uh, the workings of the mind of, a, of uh, the hero, okay, so close-up shots of an eye because see um, in cinema unlike in books it is very difficult to give descriptions unless you use the voice over technique and if you do not want to use the voice over technique how do you uh, explain uh, the stream of consciousness of a protagonist the kinds of uh, turmoil emotional uh, feelings and turmoil that the character is going through the, the only way is to uh, show the extreme close-up shot of that character, uh, any particular body part, for example, eyes here. Now, uh, from here we move on to symbolic elements that include a color, costume, props, objects, stars, sets, locations, etcetera. And in this context, we should understand that uh, apart from close-up shots and extreme close-up shots, we also have something called the long shot, which is often used to situate a person um, in or uh, in his or her particular environment. So, for example, think of the Monument Valley shots in the cinema of John Ford. So, it is important that uh, extreme long shots are taken in order to situate uh, the hero or the protagonist in a particular locale. Now, from here we will move on. So, from here we will move on to camera angle. Camera angle is the placement in relation to the object or person on view. Angle can be used for both aesthetic and psychological purposes. For example, low angle uh, is a, a position where the camera is placed before, uh, sorry, below eye level and looks up at the uh, uh, subject to suggest power and domination. This is something very common uh, to build up the heroic image of uh, um, Indian film actors. For example, uh, let us consider uh, 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 many a time you know you might have noticed the opening shot, the introductory shots of uh, um, superstars such as Rajnikanth or Amitabh Bachchan, where 
the camera is placed before or below eye level and looks up at the hero. So, this is done in order to create a larger than life kind of a uh, of an image. Um, Orson Welles also did it several times in his Citizen King. Now, high angle is where the camera looks down on its subjects making them look powerless and insignificant. So, this is completely opposite to low angle shot. Filmmakers also make use of lenses. So, we have uh, something like the wide angle lens which is the most commonly used uh, on the long shot since it provides a large focus range. We also have zoom lens which allows the cameraman to change the range of the shot from telephoto to close up without stopping the camera. The effect is to direct audience's attention to any number of objects or people within a shot. A tracking shot or a dolly shot allows fast moving action to be followed um, either close in or at a distance. Dolly shots may also be used to intensify or distance the emotions of a character by physically moving in for a close up or drawing away uh, or drawing away to a long shot. Now, lighting as I told you is an integral part of uh, cinema and it has its own language. It is one of the most important elements of producing realistic or non-realist images. The most common lighting style is the three point lighting. The key lighting is one of the brightest of the three and highlights details on the face by casting shadow on the portion that is not lit. The fill light is uh, softer and less bright and lessens the effect of sh shadowing on the face. The back light is located behind the subject. The back light gives the subject the appearance of depth. Lighting can be high or low uh, key depending upon the emotional effect that the director and cinematographer look for. Uh, you have to understand how lights are used particularly in film noir, the interplay of light and shadows and the uh, lights are used in order to create a certain kind of an impact. Now, uh, let us talk about camera movement. Now, you have to remember that the in the early days of cinema, we have been talking about the cinema of Georges Méliès and Lumiere brothers. So, in those days, the camera would remain still or static. Uh, however, it, st it is started to move during the silent film era, but with the advent of sound filmmakers started using bulky cameras and camera again became static and still. However, once handheld cameras became popular, directors had more freedom to suggest a realistic image of a space with long takes. So, the lighter the camera uh, equipment the freer a director would become and then camera started moving uh, much more. So, here is another link YouTube link that I would like to draw your attention to. Please watch it and it will give you a very good analysis of various cinematic techniques. Please watch it. So, um, from camera movement, we will move on to another area that interests us uh, that is mise en scene. Now, mise en scene me literally means putting on stage, it is a French term and uh, the term originates from the theatre where it designates everything that appears on stage. For example, sets, colors, lighting, character, movement, mise en scene includes elements of visual style and is designed to create the narrative space and help progress the story. Uh, you are already uh, familiar with uh, the French New Wave and the Cahier directors. So, the Cahier directors and critics noted a discernible style in the works of uh, certain Hollywood directors who staged their shots to illustrate a certain style. The French director Jacques Rivet also uh, uh, explained, he it took uh, went to great lengths to explain the term in Cahier du Cinema and uh, uh, the way Hollywood directors would use mise en scene as their signature style. According to Susan Hayward in Key Concepts, uh, mise en scene is the expressive tool at uh, the filmmaker's disposal which a critic can read to determine the specificity of the cinematographic work 
that is the critic can identify the particular style of a specific filmmaker and thereby point to it as an authorial sign. Some of the features of mise en scene are, it is concerned with the look of the film, it includes production design that is sets, props, objects, costumes, color, lighting. Uh, it also includes framing that includes position which is a uh, depth of field, aspect ratio, height and angle. Uh, it also includes actors performance. So, therefore, how an actor is cast, his or her makeup, movements, gestures, voice, all these things are important and then sound, the sound that emanates from the scene which is diegetic and that does not emanate from the scene is non-diegetic. Mise en scene is also as we have already discussed, it is about production design. So, what is production design? It includes elements of sets, props and costumes and uh, they play a specific function in the total film. For example, if you watch Truffaut's Jules and Jim, which is a 1964 movie and uh, try to understand how the rocking chair assumes a particular significance. By itself, it may not mean anything, but if you watch the sequence uh, and various sequences, various times and positions of the rocking chair, you will understand there is a certain meaning associated with it and it lends itself to the progression of story. Now, mise en scene can be true to life or symbolic. Um, from here, let us move on to talk about costumes. Costumes are significant because uh, they are used to connote time and place and also to provide personality traits to the characters. Think for example, how <coughs> uh, Stanley Kubrick uses uh, the period costumes in his Barry Lyndon, which is based on a novel by Thackeray. So, costumes are integral part of uh, any film. Very often we find characters dressed to look the character. Okay. So, their personality traits are also explained through the through costumes, clothes speak the, or characters speak through the clothes. Now, uh, you also know there are um, certain iconographic clothes for example, Marilyn Monroe in her seven year itch avatar and Audrey Hepburn in her breakfast at Tiffany Queen. So, clothes are symbolic of characters, they suggest something. Um, clothes also lend themselves to create the iconography of characters. For example, in the western or a superhero or gangster films, you know what clothes and costumes would these characters appear in, in order to create meaning. Color is important part of mise en scene. Color suggests class. For instance, in Martin Scorsese's 2002 film Gangs of New York, the poor immigrants, the Irish immigrants are in monochromatic colors, whereas the natives are in more flamboyant colors. Um, colors can be symbolic of characters and emotions. In Martin Scorsese's The Age of Innocence, you have to watch the colors in order to understand how he uses uh, the, uh, the motif of roses, the yellow roses in order to um, uh, suggest the growing passion between the two lead characters. So, colors suggest emotions also. Colors are also used to distinguish characters and se uh, settings. For example, in Steven St uh, Soderbergh's film uh, Traffic, which was released in 2000, the director uses a three color palette to denote settings and characters. Performers, uh, performance are a, uh, another yet another integral part of mise en scene. Stars are associated with particular genres and style of acting. For example, Marilyn Brando is associated with method acting and Elizabeth Taylor and um, Audrey Hepburn they are associated with high glamour. So, audiences come uh, with certain expectations when they come to watch these actors or stars perform. An actor's performance is best understood by his or her appearance and also is uh, informed by their gesture, style, voice, physique um, and uh, body language. So, all these things constitute their performance. Think actors like Schwarzenegger and Stallone who speak through their 
um, muscular bodies. From here we move on to sound as I have already told you sound can be diegetic or non diegetic. The diegetic sound emanates from the scene such as the sound effects, dialogues and the background sound in a scene. Non diegetic sounds are those that do not emanate from the scene we are watching for example, music or a voiceover. Music can be diegetic since it could be part of the drama. Music plays a telling role as it helps to highlight the mood of the audience. It also determines the pace of the screen action and also lends a musical motif to the action. For example, think Jaws and its famous soundtrack. Uh, also, the, uh, the James Bond introductory uh, music. So, he is associated with a certain kind of a theme music. Setting is another part of our aspect of mise en scene which establishes the time and place of the story. Specific genres are tied to specific settings. For example, gangster films are often set in cities and a western in the wild west. Now, at this point I would like to show you this clipping from um, uh, Agnipath and see how every aspect of or how every element of mise en scene is perfectly blended in this. Agnipath was directed by Mukulanan and um, this scene, this particular scene that I am showing you, um, it stars Amitabh Bachchan and Danny. Please watch the scene and make a note of mise en scene. Welcome back. So, I am sure that you understood how the actors performance, their gestures, their body language, their style, their costume, the setting, the music, everything played a vital role in adding a certain dimensions to this uh, wonderful scene. So, this is how we read a film. Mise en scene is extremely important in order to appreciate films. So, um, from here I would like to draw your attention to suggested readings and here are uh, two important books that you should be familiar with. One is Film Art an Introduction by um, David Bordwell and Kristen Thompson and then Susan Hayward's Key Concepts in Cinema Studies. So, thank you very much and we will move uh, we will meet for our next class.